Hey everybody and hello Monday. Well, um, let's see. I uh, hope you're doing well. Happy um, belated Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Let me say hi in the chat here. <sighs> Sorry about the glare on my glasses. That at all. It's a little better. Um, sorry if I seem a little discombobulated today. Um, I am quite tired. We had a very busy weekend. You know, I've been alluding to all this house cleaning and spring cleaning we've been doing for the past. Well, I've been kind of decluttering the whole house for several months, but uh, we worked really hard on the garage over the weekend. Um, because we have a thing here where, uh, once a year, the city will come around and pick up, um, garbage, really, you know, large things that won't fit in garbage cans, put it that way. And this was our weekend. And so, um, just really wanted to get a lot of stuff out of the garage that we didn't even know was there. Um, a lot of people put out yard waste. Um, we didn't have any of that this year, like, you know, tree limbs or leaf clippings stuff like that we didn't have any of that um so it feels really good but it was just a long weekend and i really want to get it done because not only have i wanted to get it done for a long time but my sister's coming to visit over memorial day and then hey hi donna or jack i'm not sure which is watching um good to see you uh and um what was my turn? Oh, uh, yeah. So, and then we're going to probably be going on a little summer vacation um, later in June. So, you know, I just really want to get this stuff done. And then so I can get back to doing more creative stuff. Um, I, I really enjoy having an organized and functional home. Um, you know, with Andrew and I both being disabled, if things get out of control, it just makes everything else harder. So, okay, cool. Hi, Jack. Thanks for coming and watching. I really appreciate it. I did see your comments question, which uh, I did go through the comments. And um, uh, Jack or Donna had a question. Hello again, Bon, bon Sioma. I just really love that name. I don't know if that's a, a your real name or if that is a screen name, but it's very pretty. It sounds foreign and Sorry if I'm butchering it. My accents are terrible. Uh, I took Spanish in high school that was required and had very bad Spanglish, but I survived. Um, but I do like hear, like when we watch foreign films or whatnot, um, hearing accents from other countries. Um, and I wish I could speak French or Italian, but yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I will just be a appreciator and an aficionado. Um, so yeah, uh, that's where we're at. And it's finally warming up here in the Bay Area. Uh, you know, we had kind of a rainy, uh, cooler spring. And um, now it's starting to heat up, so it's feeling like summer. But uh, enough of this rambling. Let me go ahead and pick today's question. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I love the randomness of this. I never know what I'm going to get. Okay. Oh, okay. So today's question is, how did you get into content creating? So, um, I, uh, again, how did you get into content creating? And how I got into content creating was, I've always been a creative person. I'm 47, and so I very much remember life before the internet. And I used to craft and make things. Uh, and <clears throat> I've never been a really great drawer, but I enjoyed doing the little bit of drawing that we had to do in school. I always loved art time in school. I was very lucky that I had um, teachers who were very creative and encouraged us. We would have art projects and um, things like that. And then my, I was in campfire, which is like Girl Scouts, and my campfire leader was very crafty. So, you know, we would make a lot of Mother's Day gifts, 
Let's see, I think I have one. Yeah. So like, this is an example of something that I made as a kid for my mom, probably for Mother's Day. Um, this is cross stitch. So yeah, and then um, I studied journalism in college, but also was attracted or more into graphic design. But in my college, if you wanted to do graphic design, it really wasn't like a standalone part of journalism, um, you know, in terms of like, I mean, there was copy editing, but if you wanted to be a copy editor and do like page layout, you had to go through the reporter track. Otherwise, you went to like art school where you needed to learn all about art, you know, art history, art theory, do um, drawing and illustrating classes, sculpting classes. I didn't really want to do any of that. I actually wanted to get through college with the minimum amount of court credits required. So um, I just, uh, after I, um, so I, I did the writing degree. And then um, a few years later after college, I went back to um, a community college where I just was able to learn graphic design or as it's otherwise known as desktop publishing. And at that point in the early 2000s, you know, desktop publishing on the computer was really a thing by then. It was no longer, you know, cutting and pasting, like literal cutting and pasting and waxing, um, which we did in college for paste up. Now you could do it all on the computer. And I loved it. And I started freelancing, doing brochures and, um, and you know, um, you know, any uh, flyers, uh, business cards, all that stuff. And I still have freelanced on and off over the years. Um, I was the newspaper or the magazine editor for this uh, LPA Today magazine, um, which was a publication that still exists for the Little People of America organization that I belong to. I did that for 10 years. Um, and now I have, like today, I have an Etsy shop. I can put a link below where I do graphic design to sell things promoting um, positive disability identity. So that's a long way to say I have always been a creative person and and I also like to share. I've always been a sharing person. So when I taught myself video editing, um, it's just been another creative outlet for me. So, you know, I like sharing about my life. I like advocating for positive, like I said, disability um, identity and disability advocacy. I just like sharing about my life and things that I'm passionate about. And then learning that through video editing and sharing videos on YouTube has just been another way to, um, you know, express that. So I, back in the day, you know, my husband watched YouTube much before I did. Um, I think I've kind of shared before that I'm somewhat social media averse. I'm not on Facebook a lot. I don't have a TikTok account. I don't do Instagram. Um, and so, you know, for a long time, I thought YouTube was just a place where you could watch cat videos and learn how to fix your toilet. And it wasn't until I came upon bloggers, like people who vlog about their life and some really talented you know, there's some really talented people on YouTube making really cool content. And it wasn't until I discovered that whole capability that I was like, wow, this is really cool. And it really inspired me to to try it myself. And I am very much a novice. I'm self-taught. Um, I don't pretend to be an expert at, at, at it at all. Um, but I really enjoyed it. The I've I've been consistent on the platform on and off over the years, and I'm trying to get more consistent. But like, you know, with most things in life, it's kind of a work in progress. So yeah, um, that's kind of how I got involved in content creating, and I keep I plan on keeping doing it um, for forever, really. I mean, I don't see, I, I intrinsically love it. I am not motivated by external factors. I'm not looking to you know, have a huge audience. I'm not looking to get rich. I'm not looking to, you know, get any, it's not about some kind of, you know, um, validation. I do it because I enjoy it. And I do it as much as my health um, and my commitments allow. 
family comes first. I prioritize my my time with Andrew and Alton first and, and friends. And then um, after that, yeah, I just like making stuff. So um, I hope that answers the question. If you have any follow-ups to that, feel free to leave them in the comments below or put them in the chat right now and I'll answer. Um, I did have a question that um, Jack or, uh, and Donna asked last week. Um, <laughs> hi, Andrew. And I will answer that as well. Um, but let me ask, answer the question that, that Jack and Donna uh, asked last week. And they wanted to know, um, I think I mentioned that we, Andrew and I are competitive. Andrew's my husband and he just joined the chat, um, if you didn't know. Um, we're quite competitive and we like playing games. And so they asked, do you like board games or do you like card games? What's your preference? And um, I would have to say we lean towards card games. We really like playing cribbage. Um, we've played Spite and Malice before. We like poker. If we can get a large enough group together. Um, I'm forgetting some. Oh, he taught me spades. Um, what's the other one, Drew, where you, I want to say it's gin, gin rummy? Where I always get mad because you, um, uh, uh, yes, I forget the term, but he, he does this thing where he'll, if he knows he has the points, but he needs to win the hand, he'll just, you know, it's a strategy thing. Uh, knock. Yes. Thank you. He'll knock and it drives me crazy. Um, oh, and then there's another game that we taught him. Um, that's maybe similar to like a gin rummy game, but it's called Oops, and it's a family card game. And I'll be really curious if anybody's watching this, either now or in the replay. If you've heard of Oops, um, let me know. Uh, it's a three deck game, and you're building runs and groups, six through twelve. And I learned to play it as a kid, uh, like I said, with my family, and I just love it. It's a it's a, it's a it's very nostalgic for me because it reminds me of playing with my grandma and my cousins. Um, and it's just a lot of fun because it, it takes some, some strategy, but it's not like, you know, it doesn't hurt your head. It doesn't hurt your brain. It's, it's a good, fun um, family pastime. So, yeah, definitely cards, but, you know, occasional board games. We like backgammon. Um, we'll do Trivia Pursuit once in a while. We'll play Yahtzee. Um, that kind of stuff. So hope that answers that question for you. And my dear husband, Andrew's asking me, which Sesame, Sesame Street character do you identify with? Oh, yeah, Scrabble. Dude, we love Scrabble. Although, again, he has played Scrabble for a long time. And he's, like, memorized all the really quirky uh, two- and three-letter words. And it's gotten to the point where, you know, in the beginning I would challenge him. Because I was like, there's no way. And then sure enough, it's a word. And then I lose my turn. And it all goes downhill from there. So, yeah. But I still enjoy Scrabble. Um, but yeah, the Sesame Street character. Well, he probably thinks I'm going to answer. There's two possibilities. Um, and you just got to hear me out on this. It's either going to be Oscar the Grouch or um, Cookie Monster. And I come by them both honestly. Well, I can be cranky. I'm not typically grouchy. But we have a joke that I do love trash. And it goes along with the whole liking to be organized and clean and tidy. And so somehow we have this joke that I can grow garbage. And I know it sounds odd. But yeah, I can fill up a trash can with the best of them. And I don't like to keep it like Oscar does. Um, I like to pitch it, but yeah. And then the other one is um, Cookie Monster because I love cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies. I've always loved chocolate chip cookies. Don't give me no cookie with any raisin in it. Maybe some nuts is okay, but chocolate chip cookies are the best. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, and I love Sesame Street in general. Um, I don't know why, I don't know why you're saying Big Bird Drew. I mean, Snuffleupagus was cool. I like Snuffy because the name was cool. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I loved, uh, I loved the Muppet. Well, I was going to say Sesame Street and then also the Muppets. Um, I think one of my favorite school field trips was, um, we were in, uh, I lived in Tacoma and the, we had a field trip up to the Seattle Science Center. Gosh, I wonder if that's still open. I hope so. And this was in the mid, mid to late eighties. And uh, Jim Hansen had a touring exhibit of the Muppet characters. And so everything from Fraggle Rock, uh, by this time Labyrinth had come out. Um, and then obviously, you know, your Kermits and Piggy and the whole gang. And it was just so cool. Um, and I, I, I love the movies. I watched all the movies. Um, yeah. Love the Muppets. Yeah, well, Drew, no oh, yes, yes, yes. Dr. Tooth and the Electric Mayhem. Yep, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're great. And I think if you ever have the chance, once in a while, because YouTube knows everything about me, um, as they do all of us, they will once in a while show um, clips of different um, Sesame Street or Muppets, either shows or movies. And when I always, I've always had a mature humor for my age. Because I was around adults a lot as a kid, mostly in medical settings, um, I could, I, I understood an adult humor in a way I don't think most other kids did, or just adult conversations, adult, adult context. So part of what I've always loved about um, Sesame Street and Muppets is they have that kind of adult context theme. Like you could watch it and if you were a kid and still be entertained and it wasn't anything inappropriate, but if you were an adult, you could kind of get some snark or a joke that was funny and to me just enhanced the characters and I don't know, just made it so much more enjoyable. Um, especially, you know, there was a lot of that with Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy's ass. Um, and then the last thing I'll just say on this, if you're a Ted Lasso fan, you should YouTube um, the guy who plays Roy Kent. I'm forgetting his name right now. But he just recently did a guest appearance on Sesame Street. And uh, you should look it up because it's pretty funny. If I, I'll put a link in the description below if I can uh, find it. And because uh, there's a, a, some good uh, kind of Ted Lasso references and jokes in his little skit. Um, Goldstein, that's his last name uh that I don't think uh, little kids wouldn't pick up on but I I'm a Ted Lasso fan and and I picked up on him so yeah um so yeah that's that's a lot about Muppets and uh let me know in the comments what your favorite characters are um are you a fan have you watched um I'm so glad that the Hansen family has um carried on the legacy I was so sad when Jim Henson died. I was in roughly, I think, the ninth grade when he died. And um, I remember seeing his last appearance on the Arsenio, Arsenio Hall show. He was debuting one of his new characters. And he commented that he wasn't feeling well during that interview. And then, like, three days later, he was dead. And he died of pneumonia. So, just super sad. Um but I'm glad his family has carried on his legacy. And, uh, yeah. Um, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to go walk Alton, even though it's getting a little warmer. He's been uh, looking at me like I'm a pork chop this afternoon. And he wants to go. So, uh, I think we will go for a walk. And then uh, get on the rest of the evening, which for me is going to be uh, cleaning up my kitchen and preparing dinner because we were working so hard in the garage and in other parts of the house. Um, I got some dishes st stacked up and, uh, you know, got to get done sometime. So, anywho, thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this. Please uh, give it a like. And, um, uh, even if you're watching it on the replay, I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And I hope you're having a great start to your Monday. It is um, the middle of May. I can't believe it. Um, but, yeah. 
Time flies. Okay. I'll see you next week, if not before. Thanks. Bye.